Namaskaram. Welcome to the course Basics of Electronics. In this video, we will be looking into current sources in electronic industry. First, I'll be talking on what are current sources and why they are needed in electronic industry. Secondly, I'll be talking on the types of current sources and their significance. Third, I'll be talking on the three applications of high current sources in electronic industry. Last but not the least, I'll be discussing on how to calculate the power consumption or current consumption of any electronic device. So let's start. What are current sources and why they are used in electronic industry? First of all, current sources are the electronic devices which supplies electric current to the load circuit to start functioning. Basically, they are not dependent on the voltage of that particular circuit, rather they are dependent on the resistance of that particular appliances or maybe the circuit. In the electronic industry, current sources are significantly important because to start any electronic circuit or maybe electrical appliances, there is a rated current we have to supply along with the rated voltage. So without a current source or without a proper current, there is nothing that functions like what we are experiencing in digital world. Alternating current and direct current are the two broader category of current sources. However, based on the appliances or based on the category of product that we are designing, we choose what type of current is required for that. To turn on the AC appliances or maybe a DC gadgets, we should have a specific current and specific voltage. For example, if you are using a refrigerator, then at least 32 amp of socket is necessary for that. Similarly, in electronic industry for a specific voltage and specific current rating, we should have a proper power supply for that. So that's why the current sources are very essential in electrical and electronic industry. Types of current sources and significance about them. In industry, there are several current sources which are generally visible in industry. However, they are categorized into a broader way as I already mentioned about alternating current and direct current. Now let's talk about the three basic categorization based on their architecture or utility. First one, based on the control method, we have two types. First one is voltage controlled current source. Another one is current controlled current source. Basically, if you are using the input voltage to control the maximum amount of current that delivers to the load circuit by this particular power supply, then it is called voltage controlled current source. In the same case, if you are using the input current to control the output current based on the circuit inside, then it is nothing but a current controlled current source. Second one, based on the output control method, we have two types. One is constant current source, another one is variable current source. As name indicates, if you are having a power supply which delivers a constant current irrespective of the load resistance or load voltage, then obviously it is a constant current source. However, if you have control over how much current to be delivered to the load circuit by using a knob or maybe a prog programmable controllers, then it is called a programmable or variable current source. Third one, based on the engineering study materials, we have ideal current source and the one is practical current source. Ideal current source is all theoretical, which has zero resistance in the path of current flow, which is doesn't exist in the practical world. And the practical current source is the one which we are talking on this particular video or maybe which we are using in day to day life. Now let's talk about the three practical examples of high current sources. First one is LED wall or LED sign boards. These are the new and very advanced uh, digital boards which are used for advertising and they include 12 volt 60 ampere or 5 volt 60 ampere SMPS of multiple numbers and they are responsible for delivering a 60 ampere of current to every part of the circuit to function and display whatever the animation that we are playing on them. This is how the entire LED boards looks like in practical and they are very bright and very clear in night vision. Second classic example for high current sources would be electric vehicle charging stations. We all know that a booming technology of electric vehicle bringing an infrastructure of electric vehicle charging. In this chargers, we will be having a specific architecture or protocol for charging the lithium ion batteries used inside. 
Initially, these battery packs are charged with a constant current of 3 to 5 ampere based on the manufacturing data. Later on, they will be maintaining a constant voltage at the terminal to charge to the fullest extent of those particular battery packs. So to charge these particular battery packs in a fast rate, we should be using a higher current for that particular matter. The concept of boost charging, fast charging or maybe efficient charging is nothing but the rate at which the electron flows, which is nothing but a current flow of that particular charger. The third classic example for high current sources is uh, home appliances. In fact, we can take an example of a grinder or mixer in our kitchen, which has an AC motor inside which will consume more than 1 ampere of power at its fullest speed. That's why we are having a knob to set the speed based on the requirement. Thereby, we can change the current flowing through that particular AC motor so that we can control the rotation per minute or RPM of that particular motor, which is nothing but helpful for mixer or grinding some materials inside that. These are the three means where we can see the practical example of high current sources. Now let's talk about how to calculate the current consumption of any device. I'll be considering two examples and I'll be explaining you the calculations. Now it's a time for doing a small mathematics. First one, I'll consider the mixer or a grinder that I just spoke about. On an average, the mixers are available for 300 to 500 watt as a power consumption. So we'll consider a 400 watt for this calculation. And we know that in our Indian outlet, the AC voltage is 230 volt at 50 hertz. With the basic calculations, we'll end up at 400 watt divided by 230 volt, which comes around to 1.7 ampere. This 1.7 ampere of current rating indicates that it is the maximum amount of current being consumed by that particular AC appliances. Let's talk about the second example of a DC exhaust fan. I'm mentioning it as a DC exhaust fan because purposefully I want to take it as a 24 volt DC voltage as an input voltage for this particular device. And we know that it is operating at a 10 watt in general. So that's why if I divide a 10 watt divided by 24 volt, then we will be ending up with a 0.41 ampere. 0.41 ampere is a DC current which is need to be supplied for this particular exhaust fan to run at its fullest speed. So this is how the power calculation and the current calculation work with AC appliances and DC appliances. What is the use of this particular current calculation that we have done? Of course, this value is very essential for selecting a diameter of the wiring that you use for these appliances. Say for example, if you are using a 1 square mm wire for your entire electrical wiring, then you must be understanding what is the maximum current carrying capacity for that particular copper wire. Otherwise, you may end up in a fire with that particular wire. That's why in high current applications, people use 2 square mm or even higher than that particular diameter wires for connection. I hope you enjoyed the entire detailed information about the current sources in electronic industry. See you again in the next video. Until then, happy learning. Namaskaram.